I'm Paul Stauffer, and this is the legendary Drew Pearson. In the house. Yeah. Oh, oh, my man. goodness. Yeah. Uh, there man. <laughs> we got Cowboy fans in the house or what? <laughs> man, I, I was at the Cowboys for 30 seconds, man. I, I got drafted in, uh, I mean, a free agent in uh, 1986. Nice, uh, nice. Yeah. What you, were, you were long. You were long gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was long gone. Yeah, as soon as the money started getting real, we yeah. had to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you, man. You thank, thank you for what you. I was a wide receiver. Oh man, oh, nice. oh, right. you could have been the next eighty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been part of the eighty-eight club. That's right. right. But instead, you went into space, which we're yeah. very grateful for. And I'm sure glad you went in another direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, right look, I would have liked to make a little more money before I went off in that direction. But hey, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, brother. Hey, we are so excited to have you on. This is such a very, very great, important story that we're excited to tell everybody about. But Leela, tell us what we're getting into with this, because this, this goes a whole lot deeper than we thought it was going to. Yeah, yes. I mean, just when you think about, you know, all the history that's been hidden, like Catherine, Catherine Johnson and, and Hidden Figures, Ed Dwight is the equivalent of Hidden Figures with space. And I think, you know, when people realize he was the foundation of all of us getting that opportunity to go to space, because he did the work, he did the hard work to, to set the tone, to set the base, and he had the, and he was the right stuff. But it wasn't identified as the right stuff because it didn't have had a little too much melanin to be the right stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's well. Mm -hmm. well but, and Ed, we're, we're certainly happy that you did, and now it's got to. What's be up, Edward? How are you today? Yeah. Oh man, hang on in there, man. I uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to be here, uh, and uh, you guys are very excited, and that excites me. <laughs> right on. That's right on. Yeah. Well, we were just talking about the uh, the sculpture in Austin, you know, right right down the road from us, and we we like tell us a little bit more about that because we 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 got to go see this. Yes, for sure. Well, uh, you know, I, you know, after I left, uh, I left the program, and I I uh, did not have a, a, a rich history, a, a, a rich black history. I went to white schools all the way through, and and uh, and 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 we keep bringing up the, the uh, this this whole thing that I didn't know who Harry Tubman was when I was 42 years old, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but, but it was explained to me, uh, all this black history that I missed by, by getting a white education. And then uh, once I found out what was going on and, uh, and it was explained to me that here in America, we've been here three, 400, three, 400 years, and there's not any, or they weren't, there are, are some few now. Uh, any black imagery in the parks and city squares and museums and galleries uh, of anything that we did, and so there was no there was no place you could go to commemorate to understand what happened here. We don't, uh, you know, and we still don't know what 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 happened here in this slavery thing and and and, and our our accomplishment accomplishments and what we did, and so I set about to change that after I left uh, the you know the. Uh, I was in there, and uh, uh, and it's just been a labor of love and a labor of ex uh, discovery and a, of explaining, and it's just been uh, I just I, I I can't give enough of my time to it. I wish I had another life, another fifty years to go, so I could really get, <laughs> so, so I could really get down. You know what I mean? <laughs> but so, a labor of love, but a labor of commitment too. Yeah. to make it happen. Oh, yeah. By all means, yeah, uh, but 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 you know the commit the commitment thing was easier than uh, than because once you bathe yourself and it, it's it's like the, the space program at large. I mean, do they don't verify this? You know, once you uh, you know uh, bathe yourself and it, the, the commitment is almost automatic. You know, once you just mm -hmm. that, this is it, man. I got to go with it. This is what this is my nature. This is what I'm what I can contribute to it and. Uh, you know, and that's how this whole thing works. And I think it's true with, with every astronaut or pilot or anybody else that does anything like this. You, uh, you know, you you you're thrown in uh, into this area. Uh, this it really was new to our commit um, and our community. Think about that, right. astronauts. Right. And we had the Tuskegee Airmen, but they became history. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. uh, but, you know, but you couldn't reach out and touch uh, a Tuskegee Airman. I mean, there's so few of them were left. Uh, but mm. but here, but look at we what we got now. We got we we, we got a band of brothers here, uh, astronaut uh, corps that you can reach out and touch and, and get information from, get input from, and uh, and get ideas from, and 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 all those things that you want to be successful in your life. And here's and we need to do this. And this movie uh, is, is a door. Then my opinion, open that that's opened that Leland. Uh, uh, help open, or maybe it all just came from Leland, but the door's open now, and it's time for us to reach out and grab and touch and get good ideas and get this these, this commitment thing and to to allow that to flow to the community. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and Leland, uh, when, when we had talked before, you had said that, uh, you know, when you were a kid, you were looking, you know, you are seeing astronauts, but you weren't seeing yourself in there and and so that's kind of the hail mary you kind of had to throw to you're like i'm going right yeah. which, is, which right. is amazing well you know it wasn't i mean i didn't i didn't even think about becoming an astronaut until i got to nasa and this friend of mine handed me an application and said you'd be a great astronaut i didn't fill it out that was for the 1996 astronaut yeah. class well but you one of my no boys need to do that i didn't fill it out but one of my boys filled it out he got in and i said wait a minute if that knucklehead can get in, I can get in. <laughs> competition, you know. And so I Amen. filled the application Amen. out for the next class, and I got in. But between wow. me not filling it out and filling it out, I saw what astronauts did. I didn't even know what astronauts did. I just think they went to space. He was flying mm -hmm. jets and in the pool and doing, you know, working in Russia and doing all these things. And I'm like, wait a minute. I can do that? Yeah. This little, this little yeah. skinny kid from Lynchburg, Virginia can do that? <laughs> nice, nice. Amen. And you did it, bro. Yeah. yeah. And how many times have you done it? You've been in you've been in space how many times now? Two times. Went up in uh 2008, 2009. I thought my aha moment, Paul and Drew, would be when I installed this two billion dollar laboratory to the space station. That paled mm -hmm. in comparison to when we floated over and had a meal in the Russian segment breaking bread at 17,500 miles per hour, going around the planet every 90 minutes with people we used to fight against, Russians and Germans. And we're breaking bread and having this meal. Drew, we picked up a football and started playing football, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that is amazing just, to me. It, it is blows amazing your mind to because me. You get this perspective change on how you see yourself in the universe with people yeah, used to find yeah. it, right? And it just, that's why everyone needs to go to space. Yeah, I can, I can imagine, can't imagine the training that you have to go through just to even think about going into space. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Well, those, how, those how, three how about days that process? How well, about that three process days leading in, into that? <laughs> those three days at Valley Rancho, man, that's pretty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I hear you, brother. Yeah. No, but it's, it's 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 all up here, really. It's, yeah. it's the mental training, the physical training. But uh, once you once you set that bit in your head that this is what you're going to do, you just make that happen. Just like Ed, you know, in the Air Force, test pilot. I mean, that's some of the hardest training you can do. And uh, you know, he said, "I'm gonna do it," and did it. Amen. You did it. Yes, you yeah. did. Both of you did. Yeah. And now you get to inspire other people, and that must be the greatest thing for other kids to now see you two and go. Maybe I could do this, right? But I got to tell but, one quick story. There was a yeah, kid yeah. I signed a picture to. His name his name was Stephen. He was in ninth grade. I said, you can do or be anything you put your mind to. I had my, me and my astronaut suit. And fast forward, I'm giving a commencement speech. And this kid walks up to me and says, hey, do you remember me? I said, no. He said, you told me I could do or be anything. And he was graduating with his PhD in aerospace engineering because I told him he could. Oh, see that? Yeah. Wow. Right that there. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah, we love that. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And thank you for doing everything that you've done. I made the history books. It's not every day we get to talk to somebody who's been in space. It's, it's amazing. Amen. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I've done a lot of things, but this is really cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and Ed, Edward, you said something about bathe yourself in it. Once you bathe yourself, mm -hmm. then the commitment's yeah. easy. Yeah. I picked that up. I'm going to use that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I talk about commitment all the time, but I never said how you bathe yourself in that <laughs> effort. And then that makes the commitment easy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you both. So much. We appreciate you.
Okay, sounds good. Well, I'm Paul Suffolk, and this is the legendary Drew Pearson. What's up, guys? All of fans. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're so excited to have you on because the story is so so important, and uh, and we couldn't not have you guys on the show. And we're so excited to get some of the legendary people behind this. But but tell us about what we're getting into because we're we're gonna tell everybody to check this out. Well, the space race is a story that is quite unexpected with its twists and turns. We look at the history of African Americans and NASA and the space program and the push pull of what it means to be some of the most brilliant, committed people in the world, a very rarefied group of people. There's only 17, you know, African American and Afro and one Afro Latino who have flown you know and so what does it take what has that journey been and what has been the greater cultural context that they had to achieve all of these amazing goals within mm -hmm. yeah and it's, and it's such an important story and there's this probably could have been twice as long as it actually is right <laughs> it must the hardest thing must have been to cut it down right it's it's always hard but we, you know, we, we wanted to tell a story that was, you know, includes a lot of individuals and it's really rich with context and, and we still wanted it to be, you know, something that's short and impactful. And, you know, it could have been longer, but we think this is a great format. It really helps people enjoy and learn about them and their and their experience and what they went through. But it's uh, it can be shared with kids. So. You know, this is the we th we thought this was the best way to reach the the widest audience with this incredible story. Mm -hmm. Was the goal of the uh, story to create awareness? Well, I think the 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 most important goal for us was to allow our participants to tell their story. If you notice structurally, they are the only ones narrating, mm -hmm. and that we have the opportunity to speak to so many of these living legends um, and give them the agency to take us through the incredible peaks and valleys of their careers was uh, very important for us in making this film. Mm -hmm. nice. Nice. And I've been lucky enough to speak to Leland before, but, but just, I, you know how special he is. Like, tell us a little bit about like, <laughs> or, like why not only so important, but but why he's just such an instrumental part of this. We were honored from the beginning to have Leland Melvin, former NASA astronaut, become one of our executive producers. Leland, as you were saying, it's one of the most incredible individuals you can meet. He's so loving. And he was our ambassador. He allowed us to connect with this tightly knit community, small group of uh, astronauts. And, you know, told them, hey, you know, these people are doing something. They're, they're you know, doing their homework and and he allowed us to slowly earn their trust and you know they're they all talk to each other so once we did an interview with one of them they would all talk amongst them like hey how are these people and like oh they're they're serious they're legit and so we would get to the next one and they already knew what we talked about with the previous one and Leland was great because he would be you know in contact with them and making them understand really our vision and what we were trying to do which is let them tell their story and it's hard to believe because everyone might say that but then their story gets shifted and, you know, there's powers that, you know, construct and build that story. And we really wanted them to tell their own story. And so Leland was incredible, you know, helping us with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and also today we're going to get to speak to Ed, who's at 90, which is which is amazing. And and uh, can you talk about the impact that he had on this? Because he wasn't in the same rotation, but gosh, it just blazed a trail for for everybody. Well, Ed Dwight is the spine of our story. You mm -hmm. know, his journey as a candidate, uh, the disappointments that happened, but ultimately this incredible career that he has had. I always think about, you know, that moment when we go to the Capitol grounds in Austin, Texas, and we look at this amazing sculptural piece that he created, which re recounts the journey from slavery to space. And nice. when we look at that sculpture and we think that Ed Dwight is able to take all of this history and learned experience and put it into this monumental work, 
you're just, you know, I, we're just so honored to have spent the time that we have with Ed and to make certain that other people know about him and his contributions as a space pioneer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, you know, of course, Drew, legendary in his own right, is in the Hall of Fame, caught the Hail Mary. And you know what we like to ask people. Yeah, well, everybody's had a Hail Mary moment. I mm -hmm. know you know what it is. You heard a Hail Mary. You know, that's when your back is to the wall. It looks like all might be lost. But some way, somehow, you overcome that. Mm -hmm. And you have that Hail Mary moment. And we hear it, I hear it in the election. This guy's going to need a Hail Mary to win this election. This guy's going to need a Hail Mary to get out of this marriage and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, Hail Mary is used in so many uh, different vernaculars. Uh, and I'm sure you guys had some Hail Mary moments as well. Well, look, with documentaries, it often happens that you start with a very clear idea and you get your plan and you set out to do it. And then, you know, these subjects are alive and they take you in, you know, their own ways. And so a documentary shifts and takes turns. And our film started with a very clear way and then started expanding because we discovered this community and, and how one astronaut, when we interviewed them, they said, well, I'm happy to be in the film with one condition. You have to make sure this other individual is part of the film because you can't understand my story without the ones that came before me and then the ones that came after. And so the story started expanding and the, we were extremely lucky. Our Hail Mary, I think, is having the best partners. We work with the Kennedy Marshall. We work with Nat Geo and their team is phenomenal. I mean, no one would have the patience to trust you with a story that's shifting and you're like, we know what's, this is going to be even better. <laughs> But it's their support and their vision that really helped us achieve what we wanted. And, and that level of trust, that group of really talented people is really, I think, our Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good catch. Good catch, guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Lisa, have you had a good Hail Mary moment in your life? Just that moment where you're just like, okay, we're going for it. Oh, you know, we were slowed down by the pandemic. Mm. And then it took a moment to get people back on board and for them to trust all of the protocols we had in place for their safety. Um, and I think, you know, in those moments where it's like, OK, we have to take a break, we just kept the fire going. And Diego and I continued to talk and think about what we wanted this film to be. And then finally the doors opened and we could be back out in the world again. You know, it, it took a moment to make this film. It's what, five years in the making, right, Diego? Yeah. So, um, but, you know, the commitment to a community and I think we were just so uh, emboldened by the receptivity and the warmth and the welcoming that we received from all of these astronauts um, and the encouragement from Leland Melvin. Um, I think that that was a part of what kept us positive and afloat and moving forward. That and your commitment, that's the key, man. You guys were definitely committed five years to making this happen. Wow, yeah. that is a serious commitment and we appreciate that commitment. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well thank, thank you so much for making this and, and giving us a great story that we can tell our children and our friends and our family about and uh, we're going to tell everyone to check it out and we really appreciate your time today thank you so thank much you, Paul and Drew. Thank all right so thank much. you guys and uh keep capturing those hail marys that's right <laughs> thank you <laughs> Love it. all right god all right. bless you thank you